Okay, guys, moving on to our next determinant of the demand curve. And the next one is going to be um, tastes. So taste, pretty easy. Pretty much with taste, we'll put if you like a product or a good, you buy more of it. Um, you buy more of it and therefore demand is going to increase for that product. So how do we relate, you know, taste sort of to our, you know, economy? So let's suppose, let's suppose, you know, what became really, you think, popular, like think about anything that became like popular, you know, on the market in the last, I don't know, five, 10 years. For example, people start buying more gluten-free food. So it's a kind of, you know, taste of our, you know, population is changing. They think that, you know, gluten-free stuff is healthier. So therefore, demand for gluten-free products has actually increased. So if you hear something um, on the test uh, that the tastes, the tastes of consumers, consumers shift towards the product towards the product so therefore they are talking about change in um, in our taste and once again if it shifts towards the product then demand for that product is going to decrease and vice versa remember um, if for example let's suppose FDA going to make a statement so FDA is going to make a statement that you know donuts donuts whatever um or eating one donut a day or two donuts a day will increase the risk uh, of um, high blood pressure or heart attack so then taste of the population is going to shift away from donuts maybe isn't it everybody loves donuts so and therefore demand for donuts is going to decrease and therefore we're going to shift it down and to the left um another example can be for example um you know brown rice became popular you know lately on the market because people believe you know that it's healthier so therefore you know taste of the population shift towards brown rice and demand for that product is going to increase so this is pretty much all you need to know for the taste moving forward Four determinant number four is pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be number of buyers, number of buyers on the market. So let's suppose we have our demand curve. Remember, we all the time indicate price and quantity. This is our demand curve, and the first event is happening that number of buyers on the market. Let's suppose is going to increase question is what do you think is going to happen with the demand for goods and services so and if you have more buyers on the market then demand for goods and services is going to be higher just think about it. we can we can think example of um remember the football games that we had at ecu when we have a football game we have more people coming into town what happened with the demand for goods and services in the uh, in greenville at that time demand for goods and services is increasing and vice versa now that we don't have students um, in in town, we don't have football games going on with um, with um, you know fans on the field. So if the number of buyers is decreasing on the market, then demand for goods and services is going to decrease. Guys, remember the very first demand. The first we increase demand over here, demand one, and for the second we have to decrease demand. It's going to shift down and to the left demand to you yes another example a uh, very good example to understand let's suppose if you're going to be a future business owner and you're looking for location where to open your for example barber shop and you're looking at location and here's the shopping center so it's all the time good to know that if for example the shopping center have some kind of big uh, big retailer like a food line okay or like here's tira 
hair steering and stuff like that. Just make sure that they're going to be there for a while. Or if food line is getting ready to close the door in that sh shopping center, what do you think is going to happen with the number of buyers in that shopping center? It's going to decrease. And most likely, if you have a barber shop or something in the shopping center, then demand for services in your barber shop is going to decrease as well because there is less people exactly in the shopping center. So, um, you know, or if um, let's suppose, you know, for example, Greenville becomes like very, very kind of, um, you know, this neat little town in eastern North Carolina, you know, it's relatively inexpensive to live here. And a lot of people, a lot of people actually moving into Greenville. So people moving into Greenville and therefore the population of Greenville is increasing. What do you think is going to happen with the demand for goods and services? People moving into Greenville, it means we have more buyers on the market. Therefore, demand for goods and services in our restaurants and our little shops and stores are going to increase as well. So therefore, with number of buyers, it's pretty self-explanatory. And the very last one is expectations. And expectations are going to have two parts over here. Expectations. So the very first one, it's going to be expectations. Um, let's suppose I'm going to do over here first about future, future prices. So, and let's suppose that we have price and quantity, we have demand curve over here. And let's suppose that first, the future price of the product, um, I put over here, let's suppose future price is going to increase. Guys, our question is, what is going to happen with the demand today? Again, think about it. You're, you're a buyer, okay? You determine demand on the market. If you know that the price, for example, of the bicycles are going to increase in the future, let's suppose the price of steel is going to go through the roof and therefore, you know, all the makers are going to increase the price of the bicycles very, very soon. What do you think is going to happen with the demand for bicycles today? Demand for bicycles today is going to increase. So today is a really important word over here. The price of the product is changing in the future. Our question is, what is going to happen with the demand today? Well, higher price in the future, it means I want to take advantage of this lower price today. So therefore, I'm going to buy product today and demand for product is increasing. I'm going to put here demand one. And the second, what if the future price, future price is going to decrease? Guys, remember, in all these determinants, we take just one isolated event. Nothing else happened on the market, just this. So if the future price of the product is decreasing, so let's suppose you know that the price of bicycles are going to decrease in the future. What are people going to do? People are going to hold on right now, isn't it? They would like to take the advantage of that lower price in the future. So therefore, today, demand is going to decrease. So this is a key word over here. Today, demand is going to decrease if the customers know that the price of bicycle is going to be low in the future. Today, we're not buying. We're going to wait. We're going to wait to take advantage of this lower price in the future therefore this is going to be demand two okay so again this is expectations about future price and the second i'm going to put over here we also have expectations about future income future income let's suppose you know that in the future once again your future income is going to decrease let's suppose you know that economy is going into the recession and a month from today your company is going to close down you're going to lose your job so your future income is decreasing my question is what are you going to do today are you going to buy more or less goods and services you're going to buy less isn't it so demand for goods and services decreasing today Demand for goods and services decreasing today. I'm going to draw it on the graph. Remember, this is our demand curve. So demand is shifting down. And this is not a good graph over here, guys. I'm sorry. 
So let's suppose I'm going to put it here. So this is initial demand. Our future income is decreasing. I haven't lost my income yet. It's in the future. So therefore demand is going to decrease today. I'm going to be more thrifty. I'm not certain about my future income if I'm going to find a new job really right away. Therefore today I'm going to start saving. And then if you know that your future income is increasing, so let's suppose you're graduating from ECU and you know that a month from today you're starting a new job and it's going to pay you, you know, much more than what you're making now. What do you think you're going to do today? You're going to go and spend your money. So therefore demand for goods and services is going to increase today. So when the consumers are confident in their future income, their income is rising, they know they're getting jobs and stuff like that. So they start spending money today, believe it or not, and therefore our demand curve is going to increase. So guys, this one is once again pretty self-explanatory. Make sure that you know really well um, the income of the population, normal and inferior good, and then price of the related good. This is probably like you know the most uh, complicated determinants of the demand curve, and we're gonna sh we're gonna move on to a supply curve.